Hello everyone, I am the Panda Photographer here and recently I made a purchase of the newer F100 7 inch IPS 1280 by 800 natively film monitor. I purchased this film monitor because I needed to replace the LCD screen of the back of my camera so I can see what I'm actually doing when I'm doing either photography or videography. It's a great film monitor for $110 but before I even start this review I would like to say that I am not endorsed or sponsored by anyone I'm not getting paid by anyone this is a independent full and honest real world review on this film monitor and I want to address the elephant in the room and let you guys know that I do love this film monitor and this is quite the film monitor for $110 packing a lot of punches. Now there are some shortcomings, but before we get start with this review, I would like you guys to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification button, and share the content. And if you want to follow me on social medias, you can down in the descriptions below, Facebook, Instagram, and much more. If you want to financially support this channel, there's also a PayPal donation link in the descriptions below but with that said is this film monitor right for you you might be surprised on what it's capable of doing for $110 there are other brands like Weltrox DC50 that is overpriced with very nasty and in very nasty colors and very grainy image quality this is a very sharp clear colors are nice but let's get into the review in my honesty and let me talk to you guys about this newer F100 7 inch IPS film monitor. So let's talk about this newer F100 film monitor. And right now I'm on campus at the San Jose University. And I'm viewing my scenery right now and I can see my visuals right now from left to right that it is very viewable from corner to corner. So brightness is really nice. Visibility on this can be troublesome in direct sunlight now right now as I see it I'm filming this with my iPhone in 4k and 24 frames a second shutter speed at 24 ISO at 40 white balance at uh, 5200 and you guys might not be able to see this but from my own eyes I can view this from here and I can view it from here I also can view it from the top and from the bottom so other than that, there is a glossy screen, so in direct sunlight, you may want to use the lens hood that comes with it. So if you are interested in this monitor, keep in mind that the lens hood is there for that particular reason to block out unnecessary light so you can see better. Uh, I do prefer losing the the film monitor's hood, not lens hood, but film monitor's hood, if you choose to. Now, keep in mind that this is just a review on this particular monitor, and I'm gonna show you in real time what you should expect from this monitor. Now, keep in mind, I do like the button layout. It's very uh, responsive and tactile, feels really good. Very sturdy buttons all throughout the menu system as well. Now, I want to talk about brightness. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, if you are going to be using picture mode and user mode, please do not go over 70%. Because after 70%, things get a little bit washed out and the contrast is not there. Things can get gray and whitish. So, my recommendation is brightness is recommendation 65%. Okay? You can control contrast, saturation, sharpness, color temperature, reds, and greens. But keep in mind that do not go over the brightness of 70. 
I always have a sweet spot for 65%. So with that said guys, other than that, it's a very beautiful display. Images look very sharp. Images look very clean. Color, repre color representation is really nice, by the way. Um, I had plenty of cheap film monitors in my day. This is by far the best one. Now, there are monitors that cost very pricey that do uh, have better results, but this is close to those high-end monitors. And I do feel that you got to give this monitor the chance and there is some really good color representation. You cannot see it from my end, but I can tell right away that it's gorgeous. Just like my EVF on my Sony camera right now. It's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. And as I said, it's sharp, it's clean, it's bright, it's vibrant and love it. But as a videographer there is some latency issues with this if i go left and right you might not be able to see it but in real time i can see a latency issue where it's actually not syncing up as good as you get from the back of your lcd on your camera so if you're expecting it to have some great latency response times don't expect it because this is a $110 film monitor. All cheap film monitors do have some latency issues. So keep that in mind. But with that said, guys, let's get into some of the things I dislike and things that need to be improved about this film monitor. On the back of this monitor is a USB upgrade port. So you have the option to upgrade the firmware if there's a firmware update for this particular model of this fill monitor there is an osd controller for some of you videographers out there there is a headphone jack a av port hdmi cable and a dc 12 volt just in case you want to power it without using the sony batteries that are compatible for this monitor so i am using the f550 batteries at this time this particular battery is a 26 milliamp hour battery and i got white because i like black and white and i also depend the photographer but i do want to stress a few things about putting the the film monitor bracket in the hood to protect it from any unwanted sunlight now this has to uh, address the issue of the HDMI cable and if you look very closely and let me zoom in for you here if I can zoom in this HDMI cable bracket is meant to protect the HDMI cable in the port from any misuse or any mishandling now keep in mind if you are using this without the bracket or as you can see this bracket here you can see that it is actually sticking out a little bit which I'm not a big fan of if you look closely it is very sticking out and that is not good and this is where the design of this film monitor need to be rethought I guess they thought this was a good idea, but it's not a good idea because I might cause stress to the thread that is on the film monitor over time. I might break something over time. I do not feel comfortable having it like this all the time, but I don't like the fact that it is not flush onto the cable, HDMI cable, to protect it for you bending the cable or jacking the cable causing damage to the HDMI port that's why it's there but I'm going to show you in the next clip how it looks without without this cover on the film monitor now as you can see I took the bracket off for the film monitor hood and now you can see that it is actually correctly flashed onto the HDMI cable, protecting it from any damage if you mishandle or cause damage to the port. 
this is protection ladies and gentlemen so you will get this in the box i definitely recommend using it for the hdmi cable to protect it so look what i'm doing this protects it from you causing damage to that hdmi cable this is what i do recommend using at all times for this particular model or any monitor that Neural makes that comes with this bracket system for the HDMI cable I do recommend that you do make sure that if you are going to use the fuel monitors cover that you have an option but with that said let's get to some more disappointing features about this fuel monitor so ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you what happens when you start recording video, either if you're in manual or in movie mode. Now, the sound that you're about to hear is coming from the speakers on the film monitor itself. I tried a number of times to try to turn it off or lower the volume, but it's not possible. I tried and it is not possible a thing that you can do hopefully in the next forward update newer you would address this issue because it is mind-boggling annoying so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on movie mode on my Sony camera now do you hear that sound that is coming from this speaker on the film monitor the only way to get rid of that which I'm going to show you right now and if you have a cable or a 3.5 headphone jack adapter plug it in the headphones and then you can start shooting video or go back into movie mode and right now I'm in movie mode therefore it doesn't make that sound anymore but to prove to you guys that this is actually a real test and then plug it back in there you guys go so this is a real world review on this particular monitor so therefore these are the shortcomings on this field monitor so you got the the bracket that doesn't fit very well with the cable HDMI cable bracket protector you didn't got the audio that is just insanely just terrible you got brightness if you go over 70 it gets very washed out it's best at 65 and it's very bright at 70 so please it's very bright at 70 real conditions are good but other than that guys these are the shortcomings of this film monitor but with that said let's get into some more good things about this monitor and as I explained to you before, that the viewing angles on this monitor are really nice without the film monitor's hood. And I can see the image really clearly from my end. You might not be able to tell because I'm recording this on an iPhone shooting in 4K. But in first person, you can definitely view the corners. It's viewable from edge to edge nice but there is some gloss that you can see it. some gloss but in my in my first person view here I can see it perfectly fine but there is the gloss that you need to be aware of but other than that guys this is a very good film monitor I do definitely recommend it if you're looking for this particular film monitor for your videography work or your photography work and I believe that for $110, you get a big bang for your buck. I, I have to say, you do get a big bang for your buck. It's something that you might want to be interested in if you want to record video without looking at the small LCD screen on your cameras. So, and as a photographer and an amateur videographer, this 7 inch screen is so big and so bright. But I assure you, at night, it's so bright that you would not have any issues with focus assist now focus assist if I press F4 gives me red indication colors telling me that I'm in focus which I already am because I'm on campus right now so and you can see 
not sure you can see it but very nice representation with focus assist now I do want to tell you talk about also what field check field is it's red it's green it's blue and then back to model which is black and white and off so you have that option but you also have safe frames which is at 96 percent then you see the red bars be around the display now is at 90 percent 86 percent 80 percent and the ratio is 2.35 percent and now it's off and f1 is just a crosshair that is centered in the center of your frame or display but as i said battery life now is something that i need to talk to you guys about and last night i got about four hours of battery with this particular newer 26 million hour battery now i'm not sure if i depleted the battery or not but it does take quite some time to charge because the standard sony batteries are much smaller in capacity wise so if you are looking into batteries i definitely recommend these newer batteries they seem to work very well so far but i got in white and i decided to get two of them which are amazingly really really last you a long time so i believe if i was to keep shooting longer i believe i could get about four to seven hours of battery lifetime with this film monitor i'm not quite sure but i was outside doing time lapse last night for about four or five hours it lasted about that long so very nice indeed very nice monitor i definitely recommend it i definitely do suggest that if you do have the money and the resources to get a better monitor i would definitely do that instead i would definitely recommend some of the newer uh high-end models but as i said when you buy monitors under 200 dollars there are going to be some latency issues that you might not be a fan of and a lot of videographers are not fans of latency issues uh with the monitors especially when you are actually recording because it can really mess up your videography work in the long term but it does well for youtubers out there that are creating a uh, content on this platform it does help a lot but with that said everyone hopefully this review has shed some light on the newer f100 7 inch ips film monitor which is amazingly bright and bright but glossy but bright but it comes with a tons of accessory it comes with hdmi cable it comes with a srgb cable as well it comes with the bracket it comes with no batteries it does not come with no batteries so if you are thinking about buying this and you think it comes with batteries you're going to have to buy your own batteries as i said earlier in this video but with that said everyone this has been the panda photographer for 606videos.com and thank you for watching this review if you find this very informative very helpful and you are a photographer or a videographer looking into a film monitor there are other models as i said newer has like the nw759 which is very popular among a lot of people apparently but this is the first review of this particular model because no one has ever reviewed it on youtube i looked everywhere and not a single video of this particular model but thank you for watching everyone and if you are subscribed to this channel please do share the content but if you're not please hit the subscribe button hit the notification button share it and follow me on the social media links down in the description below now if you are going to be supporting this channel i have a paypal i disabled super chat so you can support this channel by hitting that paypal link down in the description below as a travel photographer independent photographer and this is what i do full time until i get a job i really appreciate all the donations and all the support from all of my subscribers and those that are not subscribed with that said 
eat, sleep, photography, videography, then repeat, ladies and gentlemen. And I will see you guys in the next video. You guys take care. Happy shooting.